Jeez, Louise, these questions got deep immediately straight out the gate. Shit, you deep, honey. <laughs> there are so many people with their own stories and philosophies. We all walk our own paths and go through different things in our lifetime. What bonds us is when we take a second to slow down and relate to others through their emotions, experiences, and wisdom. Hello everyone, my name is Esteban. My goal is for us to learn from the many lives and the many feelings of others. I will ask these people random questions which they have no prior knowledge of, with the intent of engaging their opinions and thoughts which will provide a perspective of truth and knowledge to all of us. Hi, uh, my name is Angelique Imani Rodriguez. I um, am a writer. Uh, you can find everything you need to know about the work that I do on penhittingpaper.com. If you're familiar with me on Instagram, I go by Imani Sublime. I also run a online book club, more like a book list uh, that focuses on the works of writers of color. Uh, and that Instagram handle is at the Borikongo Book Gang. What is the proudest moment in your life so far? The proudest moment of my life, geez, Louise, these questions got deep immediately straight out the gate. Yep. Um, the proudest moment of my life, uh, geez, is becoming a titi, I guess. I've always been like, that's been one of the highlights is being, becoming a titi for sure. Mm -hmm. How many um, nephews or nieces do you have? Um, I have uh, a nephew who just started um, high school. Shout out to him. I have a two-year-old niece and also my niece, Casey Lynn, who's an amazing, amazing photographer. Um, you can find her at Castaneda Visuals. <laughs> you see the shameless plug for the fans, right? Yeah, I know her. She's great. <laughs> yeah. um, how has that changed your life, though? Um, it changed my life because the world became bigger. Like, you know, you, you kind of, the world became bigger to me because the things that I do in my life and the things that I say and stand for, um, you know, this is the legacy, you know, this is the, who we pass it down to and who we want to share those things with and who we do it for, you know? So I think, Knowing that, that the world is a lot bigger than me, I think it became, the world became a lot less selfish. <laughs> Let's say that, kind of grown up a little bit. Right. If you could go back in time and change a moment in your life, what would it be and why? Ciao. <laughs> um, I think that the, the problem with regret, honestly, is that, you know, one, you can't really do anything about it. So it's less about like, what would you want to change? And the question is, more what did you learn? And I think that one of the biggest things for me is that healing comes in self-reflection. Healing comes in going inward, that um, your validation and the love that you're seeking is always within you. Um, and that's that's what I think it is. Like, it's not knowing that, I guess. If you want to say what would I change is like learning that a lot faster. <laughs> what is your biggest fear? Besides my <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, my biggest fear, you know, I believe that when you say things out loud, you're casting a spell, right? So I think that my biggest fear is not following the path that my ancestors want me to follow. Like making, you know, not doing the things that is part of my journey and is part of my purpose and leaving this earth um, without doing those things. Let's get into it a little deeper in regards to your ancestors part, because I believe in that, too. If you wouldn't mind just elaborating a little bit on your um, your view on our ancestors and how do they play a role in our in our lives? Okay. Um, I think that. Every oh, so I had gone to this like it was this was during the pandemic. And um, it was a talk between Nikki Giovanni and Angela Davis. I forget. I believe it was Girls Trek, but I could be wrong. Um, and Angela Davis spoke about it in such a way that, um, you know, talking about yourself as a future ancestor and like the work that you do lending itself to everything that came before us are, are tools that we have to take with us into the future and pass along to 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 those after us i think ancestors play a part i mean i we could get that's a whole podcast yeah, you know? <laughs> want to get into it but i think it's just like 
honoring your ancestors is honoring the path that you're supposed to be on, is creating new lily pads and pathways for future generations and just, you know, doing what you can do so that when it's your turn to be an ancestor, people, you know, pre- people praying to the right ones, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And I totally agree. 100%. Shit, you're deep, honey. <laughs> <laughs> In your opinion, what, what do you think is the right way to love? Ooh, child, you catching me on the end of a breakup too. Um, <laughs> Um, I think that um, the right way to love is clearly. I think the right way to love is loudly. I think the right way to love is with a sense of responsibility to yourself. Um, I I saw this. I, I don't know his name, but I saw he he was talking about like, you know, I'm I don't need anybody to take care of me. You know, I can, I'm going to take care of myself for you and I want you to take care of yourself for me because, you know, if you're not doing those things, you know, it can't work. I think that that's the best way to love is like to make sure you're doing yourself right so you could do your partner right. Right. Um, does that apply to the relationship you just broke up with? Child. Um, no, I think that I think that that last relationship was more about not being on the same page than it was about communication. I think he was, he's a good man. He's just not good for me kind of situation, you know, I guess. And that's giving, you know, let me not get shady, but I guess that's giving him a lot of credit, whatever. (laughs) How do you feel about um, breaking up in 2023 compared to, let's say, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago? um, I think that this particular breakup um, was different because when I was younger, it was a lot more of, um, you go through a lot more to make the person stay, right? We all that, right. You don't know any better. And I think I'm not going to fault my younger self for wanting to be loved. Um, but I think that if, how can I say this? I didn't have, I didn't have a lot of boundaries or healthy boundaries, or rather I had boundaries. I just didn't vocalize them. Um, When I was younger, I feel like this particular one was more difficult or more, it was different in the ways that I had to learn, relearn how to do that. You know, like I had to kind of say, I really care about this person. I really want this to work, but this isn't healthy for me. I have to set this boundary. And, you know, uh, I, somebody once told me that boundaries aren't necessarily anything that they have to do. It's about what you will do, what you will do. It's more about what, you know, if this continues, I'm will do this, Right. you know, it's about your actions above a a reaction to them, even though, you know, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) That's the Um. whole podcast too isn't it <laughs> all right i'm gonna ask one more question in regards okay. to this because it's just it's good um how do you feel the love you received as a child played into this breakup or other breakups oh my god why i can't tell you i've been talking about this you know um there's no coincidences so no yeah. <laughs> i've been talking about this because this this particular um this particular break has me doing a lot of like shadow work, you know, like looking inwards and like the things that you have to address within yourself. And one of those things is, so I, I, um, I pulled ta- uh, like a tarot card, right. And the, the question that I asked, what'd you pull though? Um, the deck or the card? What card? Uh, the, it was this, the King of Swords. Okay. And the, 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 there's this like website. I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm not a huge, I'm not a, a connoisseur. So I looked it up or whatever. And, and there's this website I found that had like these questions at the end. And one of the questions was like, you know, uh, why do you temper your words? Why do you temper your words when you're talking to someone? What, what, what are you making space for kind of thing? So then like having to look back at the ways that you, I mean, for lack of a better way of saying this, this is like some, I don't want to sound like an Instagram therapist, but the way you people please, you know, the way you, you make room for others and what that looks like in terms of my childhood, in terms of my relationships with my parents, in terms of my relationships with my siblings, um, loaded, 
to right. say the least, you right. know, loaded, loaded for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of it. Yeah. De directly connected. <laughs> you right. Know? So, so there's healing of the of the inner child. Yes, absolutely. From the present. Absolutely. I right. actually just, you know, the new year, you, you know, how, you know, Latinos do, we like clean the whole fucking house, right? right. <laughs> so like I, I put, I changed like this, the way I had this shelf or whatever, and I put a baby picture um, that my mother had, you know, the old school frames, the wood with the little, you know what I'm yep. talking about, right? Yep. Old school. <laughs> and um, so I have the, the little frame in this little cubby and I, it, underneath it is my kitchen sink. So I'm like, talk, you talk to your innocent child. You're like, hey, you know, the same way that you would, would talk to, the same way I would talk to my nieces or nephews, right. you know? Right. Right. No, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. What is something you wish you had back or again? What do I wish I had back or again? Oh, <laughs> um, I think the, what I wish I had more of was time to pursue my, my creative, like enough enough time and enough space, mm -hmm. you know, creatives. Need, I feel like every creative needs notes, like time to do nothing, you know, time to live, time to, you know, be, and then time to create. So it's like, you need this journey, but capitalism doesn't allow that. <laughs> right, right. Um, I'm glad you brought up um, time because I think a lot of people don't understand that creative. Sometimes we just need time and, and that looks like different, different for everyone, but we need time and some type of space. We need to, um, we need to kind of inspire somehow and that could look in many different ways. How do you, how would you use that time if you had it to be inspired? You know, what's so interesting, um, you would like during the pandemic, during the lockdown, there was this conversation around like, you know, uh, you should be creating. And there were so many people that were prolific and like, you know, I, w I can say that at the start of 2022 and not 2020 was when I kind of like dug back into a lot of creative projects um, and got back to that part of my life because, all, and I had all the time, right? You're working from home. You're, you know, you can't really go out. You have all this time, but then it's like, what's, what else is happening? So it's all the other things that impact it too. So basically all that to say is like, we can't really beat ourselves up because there's so many different factors around it. You know, think of Toni Morrison who wrote Beloved, right? She had two little boys when she's writing Pulitzer Prize winning novels. Like imagine mm. the kind of spaces that you would have to find to be creative when you have all of these things happening in your life, a right. single mom, um, you know? So, I mean, and I don't, I don't got, I ain't got no kids, but <laughs> you know what I mean? like you got to find the time. It's like, you know, how those fitness gurus always say, yo, you don't find time to work out. You, I mean, you don't make time. You know what the fuck the saying is, right? Right. <laughs> what is, um, what is non-negotiable in your life? Ooh, non-negotiable. <sighs> um, deceit, um, you know, and deceit. It is always found out because, you know, just like the sun and the moon is going to come out uh, whether I look for it or not. So it, once I feel like you once I feel let me wrap that up in one phrase, emotional unsafety. When when somebody makes you feel emotionally unsafe, th th it, that's a non-negotiable for me. I'm very quick to be like, I, I, I don't know how to get past that because then I really be my full self and I'm a Pisces moon I'm an emotional bitch what can I say so <laughs> you know what I mean like I need somebody that's gonna like I need to feel secure um you know obviously all those those cliche items you know physical safety things like that but I think emotional safety for me is like number one on the list uh transparency you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice <laughs> what's your uh, rising and your sun um, my rising is Capricorn okay. and I'm a Gemini cancer cusp though. So my birthday's oh, on June 20th. So I'm nice. like right on the edge. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a T I told my friend cause you know, Gemini, um, is an air sign and right. Pisces is a water sign. Yep. So I'm a, I'm a fucking tea kettle. I just, right. oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah. The last thing I'm going to ask is, um, for the people that are watching this, what, um, piece of knowledge, advice, or even a little antidote that you would um, want to say to them? 
Um, I think, um, no, I know. One of the things uh, is to be proud of every decision that you've made because every, every decision has gotten you this far. And um, to be proud of what you've done today, even if it was making yourself a meal. Um, you are incredible. You are wonderful. Everything that you want, you should get. You deserve it. And if you asked the, if you asked the world today, if somebody thought of you, the answer is yes. Is there anything you would like to promote or say before we go? So I do have a few things. Like I said, I, I do a um, online book club book list. Uh, that focuses on the works of writers of color. That's called the Bori Congo Book Gang. I also have, um, I'm an editor for a series of writers of color on food called Fried Eggs and Rice. And lastly, um, I'm working on my own collection of flash fiction called Where We're From, which is set in the Bronx and is stories about people living and surviving and thriving. Um, you can find all of this information out on penhittingpaper.com.